welcome uh, everyone at this uh, second uh, webinar powered by uh, IOF uh, 2020. Uh, my name is uh, Gerben Splinter of uh, Wageningen Economic Research and I will be your moderator uh, for today. Um, November last year uh, we had our first uh, webinar uh, on uh, consumer behavior and um, this uh, second webinar um, is and let me show you the next slide please. Uh, Jos, can you yeah, put up the next slide, please? Because it should be working. <laughs> Little problems with the technique showing you the next slide. Yeah. is about uh, platform service models uh, in, uh, in agriculture. And uh, the main question um, is uh, for today, what are the business model challenges? Um, could you put me up for uh, with the camera, please, also, so I can see? everything is working so thank you for uh, thank you for joining us uh, uh, today um, of course I uh, I'm not uh, hosting this webinar uh, on my own uh, we have uh, three uh, perfect uh, uh, experts uh, joining us uh, uh, today who will tell you more about this uh, this topic uh, these uh, uh, experts uh, are my colleague uh, Jas Verstegen of uh, Wageningen Economic Research uh, um, Vic van der Kavaye uh, of uh, CNH uh, is the second uh, export, and uh, Patrick Honkoop of uh, 365 Farmnet is the third. And we will be assisted uh, by also uh, my colleague uh, Marian Bogers. Uh, she is doing the techniques uh, for this uh, this webinar. Um, Jos will uh, will kick off uh, uh, this webinar uh, talking about uh, platform uh, service uh, models. Uh, more in in general to us in the first uh, 10 minutes of this uh, webinar and after that Vic will take over and tell you something more about uh, uh, machine interoperability and also about the uh, data flows and uh, creating a value uh, and uh, some challenges challenges uh, he, he tells you about and Patrick uh, will end this uh, this session uh, talking about uh, the distribution uh, platform uh, for uh, software services and then uh, we have uh, probably, I think, 15 minutes uh, left uh, for uh, questions and answers. Um, because, um, yeah, it works like this. Uh, we have some, uh, uh, some rules for this, uh, this webinar uh, because, uh, yeah, we have more attendees uh, at this moment. Uh, your mic uh, will be muted uh, during the webinar. So if you want to communicate with us, uh, please use the chat uh, function. Uh, and that is also a way uh, in which you can uh, can talk to us and ask your questions uh, for later on for the Q&A part. Uh, so they will, will be uh, uh, answered at the end uh, in the discussion uh, part. So that is how it uh, how it will work for the, today. Uh, we are we have, have the webinar is scheduled uh, until uh, till five o'clock. Uh, so now um, I uh, give the mic uh, to my colleague Jos Verstegen, who will kick off this uh, webinar. Jos. To see if I'm right in front of the camera. Welcome, everyone. Uh, it's uh, my honor to uh, be part in this uh, webinar, uh, and I'm also honored to do the introduction. And I'm also honored that we have two experts in the field because I can give some maybe some general outline about uh, this topic. But of course, it's much more interesting to hear from people in the field working with data platforms how they. Uh, how they do it and how they manage the, the many challenges uh, that are there. Uh, so I'm glad uh, we have this uh, this setup. Uh, okay, um, so I, I chose as a subtitle uh, data exchange and value creation because those are the the two important topics uh, in my perspective. Uh, of course, the technical part is that you exchange data, but you do it for a reason, and the reason is that you create value for multiple parties. Otherwise, you wouldn't exchange data. So my introduction, which is only uh, 10 minutes, uh, is uh, starting from two uh, perspectives. And of course, uh, some people are very familiar probably with data platforms. Some are maybe new in this uh, group uh, on this topic. So I start with, uh, with uh, a definition of a data platform. There are several definitions on the internet. and elsewhere, but I chose two uh, different ones. You can have a very technical or uh, product uh, perspective. 
uh, emphasizing the, the technical uh, parts. So then it, it, the definition will be that it's an IT solution that combines the features and capabilities of several big data applications and utilities within a single uh, solution. So this was one I found on techopedia.com. Uh, but you can also look at it from a completely different perspective. Then you say, okay, this is more the economic or value perspective. Uh, and then you start with uh, data platform is a community of people uh, using a platform and willing to share data. And then the IT solution is secondary. It's facil facilitating the, the data exchange. And in this uh, platform, uh, it may also be the case that data producers and data consumers uh, may change, change role uh, time to time. So one moment they are data producer, the other moment they are data consumer. Uh, for example, in agriculture, this is many times the case, and probably we will hear some examples of that in the in the next uh, presentations. So two perspectives is very important, and uh, you can go from A to B, but it can be in a very different way in a, in a dark tunnel uh, using a highway uh, road or looking to a very bright sky. But let's start with a technical uh, or, or product perspective. Uh, in the definition, I said, okay, it's an IT solution uh, that combines the features of, of big data applications. Uh, companies that uh, are involved in data platforms can offer different uh, products. Uh, they can offer the software as a service. Uh, many people are using Google Docs or Office 365 in general. Those are uh, software applications you can just, you don't have to install, you can just use it from a server. And uh, it's very easy. Uh, that, that's one of the things that a company can offer, but it can go uh, more in depth. And then the company may not only, uh, let's say offer a software, but can offer a complete platform. And to the right, you see a picture of, of things that are, a uh, platform can organize things. They can they can have a database storing information uh, for for example uh, software application uh, builders. Okay, you have a software application. You can store it on the platform, and we will organize the the the, the access of uh, users, the data storage, the hosting, the scripting, all those aspects. And so you can continue with more advanced. Uh, products that a company can offer it that finally you can say okay they offer complete hardware infrastructure so not only the the technical solutions around the platform but also uh, the hardware the, the servers the the the, the, the security the, the 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 backups uh, all those things are included uh, even it can uh, mean that you can get access to a customer base so those are the, let's say, the technical aspects that, that of course, are, are very important. Uh, but you also have the economic or value perspective. And what kind of values can you have from a data platform? I already mentioned there should be value for, for multiple parties, because one should share data and the other one should use the data. And uh, that uh, the value, for example, can be in, uh, in, in many cases, that's also what a platform is doing, is that it uh, optimizes the data exchange. Uh, this picture is from uh, DKE. It's a German uh, platform in agriculture, agri-router platform. Uh, you see in the left, uh, on the left side, you see that, that many people have data and want to share them with other people uh, or other companies, and you get a uh, uh, a spider web of all kinds of uh, data exchanges, which make it very difficult uh, to, to, to organize and uh, it's very inefficient and uh, maybe different standards or different exchange errors can occur. So it, it, it is very efficient if you uh, use a central data hub or data platform to organize those things. So then, as a, for example, as a farmer, you only have to send it to the to the agri-router in this case, and then you say, okay, these and these companies, uh, these colleagues can use my data, and then they, uh, yeah, then it's more uh, efficient uh, to organize, and you don't have to worry about how things are organized. 
Another uh, aspect which is uh, very relevant is uh, the, the network effect. Uh, if you talk about data platforms, the network effect always comes to uh, comes uh, into uh, in, into place because, uh, for example, I, I mentioned here uh, joint data and unified post uh, two platforms who are active in the in the Dutch market. But uh, if you look at uh, what we are using in our personal life, the, for example, Facebook. Uh, the network effect means that if you are on Facebook and many other people worldwide are, are on Facebook, then it's very attractive for you to be there because you can connect to people worldwide. And in the past, we had uh, national uh, social media and then people had international contacts, could not be on the, on, the, on, the, on the network because of language problems. And you can see that those uh, platforms, uh, many of those platforms have uh, disappeared because of that. So the more people can that can stick to a platform, the more valuable it is to others. And it can be from the consumer side, like Facebook, but also from the uh, uh, data producer side. Uh, you, we have the joint data in the Netherlands, which is a data hub uh, initiated by uh, agricultural cooperatives. And uh, they uh, already had this uh, spider web of data exchange and they decided to do it uh, through uh, joint data, especially in the, in the dairy sector. And uh, you see that many other companies like uh, the Lely Milk, Ro Milk Wing Robot Company and uh, also data analysis uh, startups are interested to join this uh, platform because they know that's a lot of data available already on the platform. At least there's a lot of data exchange going on. It's very attractive to uh, attach your application to this platform. There's also an indirect uh, effect because the, you uh, concentrate a lot of data uh, on a platform. It's also uh, there's like a, a data lake uh, which uh, uh, arises, and this also gives opportunities to develop new products or services. And you can uh, I, I mentioned here the the farm machine insurance uh, uh, that are developed now in, in, in project projects that we are involved in. And uh, that's one example of a new product that uh, can arrive uh, by this, uh, by this uh, data lake, you can say. Then uh, there's a last uh, element that I would like to mention before I, I move on to the, my final slide with the challenges. Uh, if you have a uh, a data platform and you have a large customer base and you are able to collect uh, data from many uh, users. It also, also allows you to uh, enter uh, new markets uh, as and you can even disrupt. You can say yeah, it's a platform as a disruptor. It's not an official term, but that's maybe explains a little bit uh, what it can do. And I, in, on the right side, you see the examples from the consumer market you see google shopping and of course we had ebay and we had amazon as portals where you can buy things but because google has a lot of people on the platform they could also start uh, selling products or offering uh, a platform to uh, other uh, uh, outlets that's google shopping and down you see the icon of windows media media player maybe some of you will remember that a few years ago we had the real uh, media player, which was a very popular uh, uh, video player at this, that moment, but it has been more or less disrupted by this Windows media player, because also Windows has a large customer base. Okay, and then I have one minute left for my last slide, because this sounds uh, uh, interesting, of course, you can do a lot with data uh, exchange uh, on a platform, but there's also a lot of challenges, and I'm sure my Next speakers will also uh, talk about that. Uh, but here is a, a list. Uh, probably there are more challenges, but, but those are challenges who come up uh, quite frequently. So if you want to have uh, a data exchange, you need to have uniform standards. Sounds very logic, but the practice shows that there's a lot of differences in standards. Uh, uh, many are XML, XML based, but they're also uh, uh, json based standards so it's it's, it's, it's still a very large uh, mixture of standards and then even uh, more important then must be a willingness to share data so many especially farmers are reluctant to share data and uh, because they don't know what will happen to it or will it be used against them 
And then once uh, people have uh, attached to a platform, it's always uh, a very challenging thing to, to keep them to the, to the platform because you want to grow and you want to profit from the, the, the network effect. But that's a big challenge and I'm very curious to hear about the others, uh, what they will tell about it. Uh, then the, the, you need uh, good business models to do all the investments, but also the data producers, the, the app developers, they need to have a business models. And then I, I told you about the platform involvement. So there's a risk that big companies with a large customer base take over a market. So that's a threat. And then, of course, you have the privacy and governance issues. Uh, uh, what will happen to my data? How can we uh, control all this and um, deal with it in a, in a proper way? That's what I want to tell. Uh, I hope uh, the, the next speakers can uh, uh, elaborate on these topics. So I thank you very much for your attention. And uh, let's move on with the other actions. OK, thank you, uh, Jos. So uh, uh, now joining us uh, for the next presentation is, is Vic. Vic, uh, can you take over and uh, please uh, uh, do your presentation? Thank you. Yep. Thank you. So um, a little explanation. Um, in IOF 2020, we, we came together with some manufacturers to work on machine interoperability because we think that this is a, one of the key issues that needs to be addressed to build that ecosystem so that everything can talk to everything and the data can be um, exchanged. Because without the data exchange, there won't be any value creation. Next slide, please. Okay. So, I'm, yes, 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 yes. The slide I'm, is not there. I will, I will continue. So, why is yeah. data so important for machinery manufacturers? Well, actually, if we just look at the, the current state, we are the biggest generators of uh, data in, in agriculture. And this is historically, and this was even without the digital farming uh, evolution in mind. But it's possible to record a lot of data on the vehicle displays. Also, when we, we're operating the, the vehicles in the field, uh, we need data if you want to do variable rates. So data is important um, as, as input to make our machines work efficiently. And historically, we have a, a very good relationship with the farmers. Um, we have been helping farmers for ages, making them more productive. And if I'm thinking about my own company, we are existing 177 years, I believe, this year. So we were making implements for farmers, steam-powered implements. Uh, we did everything to make the farmer more productive. And today, the farmer needs data to become more productive. So we will help uh, him with that. But also, data poses an opportunity uh, also for us as manufacturers. I think based on the data, we can create better machines and do some other nice things. Next slide, please. So I told you we've got a very good relationship and in discussion with the farmers organizations, uh, we found that there's a lot of a lack of trust um, and we consider the data to be from the farmers. So we're not in a consumer world like Google where we can take the data from consumers and sell it and make money uh, based out of it. The data from the farmer, it's an emotional thing. It's what the farmer is working for um, a whole year. And it's the first thing that a farmer is interested in. So if the harvest happens, the first thing that he's going to ask is, what did I make to the contract? So that's a number. These are the numbers uh, actually that we're talking about in agriculture. So we made the code of conduct together with the farmers organizations, with other people involved in, in, in the farming value chain. And this states actually that the data belongs to the data originator, which is in most cases the farmer. Um, so we state basically that we won't take the data from the farmer um, without the farmer agreeing to what we're gonna do with the data. So we need contractual agreements um, and we need these agreements because the data from the farm, they're not covered by any legislation like GDPR. Although, as I told you, it's very sensitive data. So the, the framework is voluntary to adopt, so you don't have to stick to it if you don't want to. But the, the end goal is to provide value for the farmer. Um, and the concept is that the data originator, if we measure data on the farm, it belongs to the farm. And this already has, has a big impact on the business model. So that's why I'm inserting this, uh, 
here already. So the data belongs to the farmer. Next slide, please. So for machinery manufacturers, how does this data flow work? So we've got the, the, the tractor or any other agricultural vehicle. Um, there's a canvas on it. A canvas is like the lifeline of the tractor. It connects all sensors, actuators, um, control units, and there's a lot of data flowing on it. That data is sent to a platform. Platform um, filters the data between proprietary machine data and agronomic data, and that data is made available uh, so that other platforms or software providers can use the data to create value. So I made a split here between proprietary data, machine data, and available agronomic data. So the Canvas technology, this is something from decades ago. It was not meant to be connected to the internet. Um, and the same happens in Industry 4.0, because now we can connect this, it poses a big threat. So the more we're going to move forward, the more this data will be closed for cybersecurity reasons. And there's also a lot of data that actually doesn't make sense to the farmer. For example, how a gearbox is, is shifting gears, but which actually represent millions, multiple millions of, of R&D costs from the manufacturers, um, for example, to make the tractor more fuel efficient. So this is data that we typically close, but the farmers also agree to that in the code of conduct. But the goal is to make all the agronomic data, the data which makes sense for the farmer to make that available. So that all is owned by the farmer. Next slide, please. So business models, how does the, can this data bring value to us uh, machinery manufacturers? Can you click once again? So um, we want to use the data to make better products. So we see in real time what the farmer is doing with the vehicle. So if we aggregate all that data, we've got big data about the usage of our vehicles. Um, how the vehicles breaks down, what the farmer is doing. So it allows us to engineer the tractor or the vehicle to the specifications, uh, which is most optimal for the farmer's work. Next point. It also allows us to use the data to optimize our internal processes. For example, if a tractor breaks down and there's a warranty claim, we have the data already. So it's just a matter of clicking a button and uh, we can optimize the processes. So. We need less work, less errors, more efficient, so the payment to the dealers uh, is faster, etc. Another uh, big thing which is being implemented right now, and some manufacturers have it already, is, for example, the remote um, software update. So similar like with your um, computer, as manufacturer, we can push software updates to the vehicle. So there's no dealer anymore involved that needs to travel to the vehicle. The farmer doesn't have to go to the dealership, we can all do it much more efficiently. Now, all this data, this is for internal use, but some manufacturers thought, okay, well, now we've got all this data, maybe we can do something more with it. And some um, customers, farmers are expecting this from a dealership. And I think Patrick will give you a nice example of expanding into a new um, area based on data. Next point, please. Also, the data helps us uh, building a better relationship with the customers and, and our farmers actually are trusting us and, and we don't have any issues getting access to the data. I think it's mainly because during uh, critical periods in the year, a lot of our dealers are available 24-7 to help um, the farmers going in the field. So they trust us with the data, but now the dealers have even more insight in what the customer is doing. So if they see that there's an issue, um, they can uh, intervene immediately. And also we centrally manufacturers are building um, facilities to also um, monitor what the farmer is doing in the field. I'll give you a nice example. So we've got a control room here on, on, on combines. Um, one of our customers had his combine harvester uh, jammed all the time. So we called him what, to find out what was going wrong. And apparently he was using, he planted a new uh, seed hybrid which had totally different specifications and the combine harvester did not work um, very um, effectively on that. So we helped them uh, customize the settings and we also take that into account then if we uh, build new uh, combine harvester. This is how data helps us uh, improving the relationship. Next point, please. But also our suppliers, uh, they want to get data from the vehicles, data which in the end belongs to the farmer, but 
a lot of suppliers of components can, just like we provide better tractors, can provide better products to us, better components that go in, into the tractor. Think about gearboxes, filters, tires. There's a lot of people that want to get data. So in the end, there will be much better vehicles than we have today at, at the lower cost. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, minutes so left, we. Uh, how many minutes? Five okay. minutes. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go quickly. So the business models actually didn't help uh, here. Um, the software, if you click a couple of times, the whole slide will, will appear. Um, we need to standardize the data format. Um, the software companies will provide uh, new services. Uh, but actually, the equipment manufacturers need to make the investment in the standards, which uh, is, is a bit weird. So we see three uh, business models, actually. One is a subscription for the data trans uh, transfer is paid by the farmer. Um, actually, we manufacturers provide it together with the equipment. Um, and then there's another model in place where the software companies who provide the value to the farmer pay something to get the data so they can, that they can provide the, the value. So these are the, the three most frequent business models. Next slide, please. So challenges that we have in, in the company is that we collect a lot of data, but there's a lot of value created elsewhere. So this data transfer and compatibility, it's, it's a big issue. To create all this data transfer, it costs a lot of money. It's not only transferring the data, but we also need to provide security, um, safety, privacy, etc. And that requires us to build a whole new set of competencies. So we were good at iron um, um, engineering, but not at uh, software engineering. And there's many competing priorities uh, in, in within the company so we also need to make sure that our uh, engines are fuel efficient and they uh, um, comply with the um, emission regulations etc another issue that we have is that the business models are not always clear so we potentially could could make money from um warranty improvements process improvements but this is very difficult to um, calculate beforehand it's only when you have the data that you can do something with it and that proof of concepts then uh, validate the business model behind it. Next slide, and this is the last slide. But the challenges are not only internal on the business model, there's also external challenges. We see that the farmers are not so uh, willing to give a lot of money for this new IoT technology. Um, they don't see the value when they buy equipment, it's not user-friendly. Nothing is working together at this point with anything else. There's a lot of interoperability issues to be solved. Farmers fear misappropriate data use. We've got a lot of small farmers that uh, don't see, actually the return on investment is lower for them. But most importantly, I think that whole ecosystem where data is flowing, it's still growing. It's not established. Okay, IOF 2020 is helping with that, but we're still in the very early um, days of um, uh, the, the, the data ecosystem in agriculture. Another point that you can say is that the value is not in the data, but in the algorithms and the improvement it brings. So what's the value of the data? What is the business model behind the data when you don't do anything with it? It's only when you do something in the field that the value is created. And then for us specifically, um, we sell in Combine harvesters from 400,000 euro. Then if you ask the farmer, okay, and now you need to pay 20 euro um, to get your data, which you can get on the vehicle right away. Then they say, yeah, forget it, <laughs> let's not do it. So what's the value of that data compared to the value of the vehicle? It's difficult to price. So for us, it's included when you buy a, a new vehicle. And then an, another point that we have seen here in IOF 2020, and it's not related so much to um, machinery, but to sensor providers. Um, and it's it's uh, the actually the business model is hurting the development, I, I believe. We're talking a lot about those new business models where you're not pricing for the actual hardware, but you're pricing for the software. Well, what actually is happening with that is that people who, companies who are providing services are very reluctant to share the data behind the services. And I think that is, is um, 
a break on actually the development on, on algorithms based on data. And to give an example, we've got, we saw in a certain use case, two um, business models, one of a sensor provider, which just is selling the sensor and the guys need the data from the sensor and the sensor manufacturer said, yeah, sure, what data do you want it in? And the service provider who was giving the sensor basically for free and was pricing for the service actually did not want to give the data away because this was his business model. So this is was my light slide. There's a lot that we can talk about and potentially I need another couple, couple of hours, but at least it gives you a flavor of the complexities around business models in agriculture equipment. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Vic, for your inspiring uh, presentation. Um, so um, I uh, already uh, called out uh, for uh, the Q&A part, uh, uh, all the attendees uh, to uh, post their questions. Uh, so please do so. Uh, next up is uh, Patrick uh, Honkoop, uh, who will be uh, uh, joining us on the topic of uh, software as a service. So, uh, Patrick, uh, please uh, start your presentation, please. Yeah, thank you, Gerben. Hello, all. Um, so, in my presentation, I will describe the, the benefits and challenges of operating a, a, a platform based on the software as a service uh, model. The example is Trisha FarmNet. Um, we are involved in different use cases in the project. So let's get started. So please, next slide. So first of all, what is 365 or what is the platform? So in the screen, you see a typical farm, a mixed farm, a West, uh, European farm, where you have like your, your fields, um, where there is like also livestock farming with cows, for instance, where you have stock management, you have the office, maybe it's also some, some uh, biogas. And today, this farmer has to comply with all kinds of regulations. He has to record all kinds of activities. And he is using all kinds of software systems to improve his processes on his farm. However, um, the number of apps available on the market is rapidly growing, but most of them are not connected. Meaning for the farmer that he has to use or have to enter the data multiple times about the fields, about the crops, and um, the, the solutions are not connected with each other. So therefore, the acceptance is, is still limiting. Um, he has many different passport, passport for each different applications. So he's looking for a solution that integrates and connects the different services so that he can only, and he only needs to enter once his data of, of, of his farm. Therefore, um, the ID came up with 365 to combine uh, these applications in one open ecosystem. Maybe you can click, uh, Gerben. Um, in one, one ecosystem to manage this entire farm. So not only focus on crop farming, but more on the, the entire uh, farming, meaning as well dairy and also in future pig farming integrated in one ecosystem. So that with one, one dashboard, the farmer can manage his entire operation with one look and feel, one design. And of course, the idea is not to do it all, all by ourselves, but just to collaborate with many of the industry partners to connect the applications with this ecosystem so that the master data that is entered in the platform can be used via APIs by the different companies. Next slide, please. So we are talking here about a platform um, and I think it is important. We are discussing in the industry a lot about platforms and everybody has a platform. However, most of the times it is our, our software application that, 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 that we are talking about rather than platforms because in a platform you have at least two parties or two customer groups involved uh, which you bring together via your platform. In this case, we have one on the one hand, the group of farmers that are looking for solutions to optimize their farm or to make their life easier. And on the other hand, we have like the app providers in this way, the, the partner companies that are provider providing software applications to the farmer. The challenge is of operating this, this um, a platform is to, to get those two groups in balance. On the one hand, attract enough farmers to make it attractive for app providers to use the platform and, of course, the other way around. 
Next slide, please. So first, um, you need to def define how to attract the farmers, so the end users of the, the platform. And, and therefore, uh, we have developed some, some own features to make the, the recording, which you have to do for the, for, uh, the regulation, more easy. Maybe you can click a few times to have the, the four. Thank you. So providing functionalities for do the documentation, have, it, have these functionalities mobile, meaning you have an app to go in, in your field or in, in the barn and to have the data of your farm with you in your pocket. Provide functionalities for fulfilling the cross-compliance legislation, for instance, to optimize um, the use of fertilizer and pesticides. And then, of course, also based on this data, um, creating reporting, creating insights to give the farmer a solution to optimize his, his operation. So that's the, the, the first side of the platform. And then you have the other side of the platform, which are, in our case, the partners. Next slide, please. So in the meantime, it is an ecosystem of many different partner companies. And also there, the challenge is, first of all, how to attract these companies to the ecosystem, but then also make it easy for them to integrate their application in the platform, meaning provide APIs, easy APIs to get data out of the platform, to send data back. Um, but on the other hand, it's also important for sure to guarantee a certain quality level of the different applications provided by these app providers. So therefore, the main challenge on, the, on this side is to find the right balance on opening the platform up. So how, how easily can a partner join the ecosystem? Which kind of guidelines uh, are there to, to join the ecosystem? To on the one hand, get enough partners on board, thereby get enough apps available for the farmer, but on the other hand, also guarantee a certain level of, of quality, quality standards. And it's not only about quality, also align on the data security. So make sure that every partner also agrees on certain data policies. In this case, Vic mentioned before that the farmer is owning the data and you can get some data of the, of the farmer. However, the, the, the farmer really have to accept to share certain data. For instance, to share data about fields, about machines, or about, about his crops, um, and not getting all data automatically available. Next slide, please. So then we have the, the platform, and now more about the business model and the challenges over there. So it is really an, an, an app store, the farmer, starts with uh, registering his for the, the basic 365 Farmnet platform where he gets some functionalities for, for free for as well crop as dairy. And then in the app store, he can activate different add-on modules, different apps. Maybe you can click once further, the entire slide. So the um, the, the farmer is then activating these modules and each modern module, each app has a certain price and the, the farmer pays to 365 and up to 70% of the revenue goes then back to the partner company, to the app provider that is developing the app. However, the entire shopping and billing is centrally organized by the basic platform 365 as well as the entire first level support so that the farmer only have one contact person to go to contact if he has some issues or some problems with using one of these, these applications in, in the ecosystem. Next slide, please. You have five minutes left. Okay, thank you. So then about the, the, the price model and the challenges over there, as I said before, so it is based on a software as a service model. The farmer pays a certain license per month, 
So we can also cancel each application every month and the application can be tested 10 days for free to get kind of an appetizer, right? to get a feeling about the level of functionalities of the different apps and to then also evaluate if, if it is uh, creating the, the value he's looking for. Not all apps provide all the functionalities in the test phase um, to make sure that, that, that the, the farmer is not doing everything in the 10 days and then can do everything without paying for it. So the prices of the, the apps are based on the farm size. So based on the number of hectares or number of animals or number of machines. By this, it's very flexible and it's on the one hand attractive for the smaller farms with maybe only 50 hectares, as well as for larger farms with over 1000 hectares. And to cover not only one specific group of farmers, but try to target as much customers as possible. The challenge, of course, is then also to find the right price setting, as well as also make sure to the farmer the value of the servers of the service. As Vic mentioned as well before, it is still a challenge that the farmer is paying for a service rather than for the hardware because it's not that tangible. However, the benefits of a software as a service model, that you have a continuous cash flow, as well as you have continuous contact points to the customer. So you do not sell it once and then you do not hear anything more about the customer anymore. Now you have a continuous way, a continuous possibility to get in touch with your customer. Next slide, please. So the benefits of, of an integrated solution, then uh, rather a standalone solution, is that you do not have your application on its own, but your app together with an entire ecosystem, with an entire farm management system, uh, where you get the basic for free. And the app provider can really focus on creating algorithms, creating reports, so really stuck to his, his, his uh, core competences and the rest is covered by the, the basic platform. And you can team up for marketing activities because the promotion is not only done for the basic platform, but for the entire ecosystem. So as well as the, the single apps. And of course, the sales network, the different app providers have um, sales network. The, the ecosystem itself, Street 5, have a sales team. So the entire sales activities are also joined up together. First level of support is covered as well as a shop. Uh, shop sounds very easy, but uh, for for agricultural purposes, it can also be hard to really find and develop a, a suitable shop to cover all the different uh, all the different needs. And you can can get access to an existing customer base. And then we are back by the initial slide where we discussed about the challenge of a platform. Uh, we need to get a, a high amount of farmers to make it as well attractive for partners to, to join the ecosystem. So that was my last slide. I think I'm good in time. So I think now we can open up for questions. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Patrick, also for your uh, presentation. And indeed, uh, we uh, have a quarter of an hour uh, left uh, till five o'clock for uh, questions and answers. And uh, there were already uh, coming in some uh, questions and answers. Uh, the first uh, question uh, was uh, uh, addressed uh, by uh, Augustas. Hopefully I'm pronouncing your name uh, right. Uh, Augustas had the question, the first question uh, to Vic. And um, his um, uh, question is, uh, of course, uh, Vic, it's clear about the value of data for machine manufacturers. Uh, but uh, what do you think? What is the main incentive and value proposition uh, for the farmer uh, to actually uh, share uh, data? So Vic, uh, please uh, uh, tell us more about uh, that. And maybe also Marion, uh, uh, Marion, could you uh, unmute uh, the, the mic of uh, uh, Augustas? 
so he could uh, maybe uh, respond to uh, uh, the answer Vic is, is giving. So uh, please, Vic. Okay, so it's easy. A farmer in the end is a businessman that needs to keep his business running, and what he's looking at is his PL. So if there's a value in sharing the data, he will do so. So you need to be able to convince him that there is a value. Um, so in our case, this is um, the availability of the user of the data for his own purposes and better services uh, when his machine is breaking down or extended warranty or something. So I see in the future more data is going to be from, from the machinery manufacturer sold as a package where you have uh, extended warranty with the data services and the maintenance services all inclu included in one. What I see with the farmers is that there's they have two positions, whether it is to share data with their uh, suppliers like equipment manufacturers, but also seed providers and, and chemical providers, or they need to share data with people on the other side of the value chain, which is um, uh, the, the food processors, etc. So on the side of the suppliers, they have no issue. They see a benefit there, but if it's about sharing data with their customers, they see some issues because they're fearing that the data will be used um, by um, the, the, the food processors to negotiate lower prices. So they're not so happy in sharing that data. Although we could say that it depends on um, the region by region. Um, in some regions, people get more monetary value if they share the data together with their products. I'm thinking about Australia, for example, if you're selling wheat with a higher protein content, you get more money. So farmers are willing to share the data to prove that there's a higher protein content. So it all is, is about money in the end. Okay, thank you, Vic. Uh, time left for a short response uh, by uh, Augustas, if he wants to. Augustas, okay. are you ready? Thanks for me, it was perfectly clear. So thanks so much for your insights, Vic. It was a pleasure. Okay, thank you very much. So we go to the next question. And the next question was also asked uh, to Vic. And um, that question um, came from uh, uh, our colleague, uh, Corvatel. Um, he asked uh, Vic, um, what is your most brilliant example uh, where data exchange uh, is working and what makes it, uh, it tick? Okay. Um, could you answer actually, that question? Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, Vic? it's one from, from the Netherlands. Um, and I was doing a presentation in Wageningen. And I told the same story that, that farmers are always complaining. And it was in the newspaper that machinery manufacturers are making millions and millions based on the data, which is completely fake news. Um, that farmers are always complaining and somebody came to me and said look um this this value creation based on the data that where farmers are betting from it it exists look at the sugar industry in the netherlands they publish their numbers it's open source and you can look at it and you can see a clear point when the yield of sugar by hectare is increasing and that coincides when with the data sharing in the value chain um, and by sharing the data, uh, you have aggregated data and that allows optimization of the complete um, uh, supply chain and, and, and production process. And in the end, also the farmer is benefiting because their yield is increasing and they can s sell uh, more sugar. Um, and I think this is a good example that shows that if data is shared across the value chain, even with um, the consumers of, of the farm products, um, it creates value for everybody, for the for the farmer, but also for the sugar uh, industry in the end. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Vic. Um, Cor, um, short reaction, or is it clear to you? Could you please open the mic, uh, Marion? It's for open. It's open for Cor? Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, so we go to the next, uh, next one. Um, we have also a question. Uh, uh, for Patrick um, uh, by uh, Juan. Uh, Juan is asking uh, Patrick, um, is there specific uh, considerations to take into account uh, when your market target uh, are the uh, co cooperative uh, or farmers, uh, co cooperative of farmers, I, uh, I must say. Um, Patrick, could you give an answer to that uh, question by Juan? Yeah, I think it is an, an, an interesting question and uh, to be honest, um, by now we do not have that much experience with cooperatives uh, since we are targeting directly the farmer. However, we see also in certain markets, for instance in France, where we are getting more and more active, 
that cooperatives are really important, um, that are an important supplier. So we are now as well also in discussion with some cooperatives. Um, we see that, that they are really looking in having some solutions to make the advisory more easy to the customer. Uh, so that they don't have to go all in the car and to the fields, but that they have more a software solution to give advice to the farmer and see as well also the effect, effect of certain advisory. For instance, if um, a veterinarian gives some advice on, on a certain uh, feed ratio and that he sees directly what kind of effect does it has on milk yield, that they don't have to go to the farm, but it is all in, in the software available. So I think it is really important to understand the the solution or, or the problems the cooperative have and what he is trying to solve with your solution. Mm -hmm. And regarding the business model, we see also there that um, most of them are more looking for um, a rather fixed model than uh, a software as a service model. Okay, thank you very much, Patrick. Um, is that question clear to you, Juan? Are you out there? <laughs> Yes, um, I see Juan is uh, uh, posting. So, uh, okay, thank you very much. So, um, I have a question for uh, for Jos here, and it's uh, it's also a question of uh, Augustas. Uh, uh, Augustas is uh, asking Jos, um, how do you think uh, uh, the adoption uh, of a platform, uh, as well as specific applications inside, uh, will be affected uh, by a, re a regional uh, issue? Uh, and in effect, uh, that uh, southern uh, uh, South Europe and North Europe farmers uh, differ a lot. Jos, uh, could you please uh, answer that question? Is it clear to you? Yeah, the answer is clear, but uh, after the question is clear, but I don't know if it's mm -hmm. a difficult question because um, I, within this uh, IOF uh, project, I have some uh, contacts with. Uh, with, with farmers in the in the north and in the in the south, uh, so, yeah, there is a, a cultural difference, uh, maybe on, uh, on 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 a cooperative culture. There's a difference. It was also already mentioned by Patrick that some countries like France very much uh, work with cooperatives. Also, the Netherlands is very much uh, uh, cooperatively, uh, let's say, structured uh, and. Um, uh, there's also not only a cultural difference, but also a difference in, in size. Uh, uh, you ask about Northern Europe and Southern Europe. Uh, I'm also quite active in Japan. And there you have rice farmers with, with less than one hectare. Uh, they can control the, 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 their farm quite easily by themselves. So they, they don't need uh, big centers and so on. But uh, for example, in one of the use cases, a new use case in IOF, uh, you see that uh, this uh, in silo IO feed uh, uh, use case. Uh, there they have sensors on uh, silos, and especially companies, uh, farmers with, with, with multiple facilities uh, with, with stables in, in different parts of, uh, of, of, uh, of, of, uh, of a village, they are very much uh, supported by this uh, in silo uh, solution because they don't have to go to the silos and check if there's still feed in the silo, but they can just check on one uh, uh, computer or maybe even on their mobile phone uh, what the status is of the, the feed uh, 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 stock. So for, for those bigger companies, it's, it's easy to, to use, I think. So there's not only a, a cultural difference, but also uh, uh, yeah, farm structure also uh, matters, I think. Okay, thank you. Jos, is it clear to you, for, uh, Augustas? Yeah, thanks so much for the insights. I know that it's a really hard question and there is always no single answer, but uh, I totally agree with you. So thanks for your comment. Okay, thank you very much. Then I have a next uh, question coming up. It, it, it isn't addressed, but I think it's, uh, it's a question uh, which suits uh, Vic uh, the best. It's a question by uh, Vangelis. Um, he uh, uh, posted uh, the next question. He says, uh, do you believe that agricultural data uh, will be another stream of income for farmers. Um, what is your opinion uh, of agricultural co cooperatives that are also share data? Uh, are there going to be any issues between the farmers and the cooperatives? And uh, 
is next question, uh, lots of questions maybe, is that some farm machinery manufacturers support that the data belong to them uh, since they build the machinery. Is this uh, uh, correct? Uh, then the farmers buy or rent their machinery uh, from the farm machinery manufacturers. Uh, lots of questions. Can you answer that question, those questions, Vic? Is, is that right? Yeah. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I'm a yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a fantastic topic. I call it the hoax of the data um, story. Uh, it's uh, the data is supposed to be the oil of the 21st century. I believe that uh, data is not worth anything, and in the end, nobody will make money with data. We manufacturers are not going to sell any more tractor uh, because we are. Um, using data or the data won't bring us anything. In the end, we will sell less tractors. Uh, tractors are gonna, are gonna be cheaper and we're gonna make, make less money from maintenance because they're gonna be cheaper to operate. The same uh, is, is true for the farmers. I mean, um, production is gonna be more efficient. They're not gonna be able to sell the data. And if they uh, will have to sell the data, they're gonna pay for it anyway uh, to chemical companies and so forth. So I think, the guy that told this, the farmer is really selling, yeah, air castles to uh, to um, the farmers, and and this doesn't help. Um, and to immediately go to the last question, um, maybe I can add something if if if, if allowed. By the yeah, sure. Chairman. Yes, Herman. that's allowed. That's allowed. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah, maybe it'd be good for the discussion because I I tend to disagree with you a little bit, and I have an that's example. Uh, brought to me by one of the, the big uh, slaughterhouses in the Netherlands. And they say uh, it's not always clear to farmers what uh, happens with the data and how it brings value. But the fact that we can sell our uh, products to Japan is because of this transparency in the chain, in the value chain. And that's really based on the data that is delivered by the farmers. And yeah, do they do the farmers get more money of it? Because of course, that's, that was the, the, the main question. Do they really benefit? Uh, there's still a, a world market pride, price for, for meat, but, but if you are able to sell to Japan, which is a very attractive market, and other companies are not, then I think there's a surplus that somehow will also be, uh, let's say, allocated to, to the farmers because uh, the, this slaughterhouse wants to get animals, of course, to, to, to slaughter and to sell to Japan. So, I think yeah. that's an example in which value, which is not always very clear, but there certainly is value from, from, from data sharing. Okay, would you like to respond to that, uh, Vic? I and not necessarily disagree, but I call it the, uh, the advantage of the early mover. But once everybody is having the data, um, there's not going to be any value anymore. I, there's going to be a risk if you're not having the data that you're not going to be able to sell your products at the right price. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Sangelis, um, are you pleased with all these answers uh, given by Vic and, uh, and Jos? If, if I may um, answer the last question. Um, yeah, I, I know the story about renting the, 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 the software which is run on the tractor, but I think this is a legal story. There's uh, from John Deere specifically, but there is no manufacturer which is sharing more data than John Deere so far. Um, and they're actually pretty open, so I should not create fear too much. And anyway, I think the market, if there would be closed systems, uh, will be the market pressure will will avoid this. Um, so I, I I have no fear unless you have concrete examples. Um, okay, thank you very much. Um, I think uh, we have uh, one last question uh, left, as I can see, and uh, it's a question for Patrick, uh, uh, also by our colleague uh, Cor Watel. Um, uh, Cor asks uh, Patrick, um, thanks for your insights, uh, of course, and you explained the clear model. Uh, is this model already uh, fully up and running, or is it in the test phase? Uh, what is the next key step in its rollout? Patrick, could you please answer that question? So in fact, yes, we are up and running uh, for already almost, I think, four years. Uh, so we have also learned a lot uh, over the last four years. 
Um, for instance, what we are now looking into is that we have currently a model that the modules, uh, the apps can be canceled every month. The farmer is also getting an invoice every month. And some of the farmers are saying, no, I would like to, to have like a, a yearly fee. Um, that's, that's something which you are now looking into uh, something else that they are also um, tend to look in, 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 in like groups of apps so that you not sell a single individual app, but you can see which apps can be combined to offer like a package to the farmer and to thereby give an, an, an overall solution. For instance, give the farmer an app for the communication with the machine with like a fertilizer planner that the data from the machine can directly be used for making the fertilizer planner. Um, and last point, uh, also there we have learned that although we are um, getting more like digital, um, farmers are still uh, rather offline. So also there it's not developing the app store, doing some social media, media campaigns and get all kinds of customers. Yes, it works to a certain limit. So there really also promotion is really key not only online, but also in magazines, also having people on the ground, train as well also the, the, the sales partners of, of our uh, app providers, so that you have different ways to do the distribution. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Patrick. Um, um, I will be uh, wrapping it up now, this, uh, this webinar uh, on, uh, on platform uh, business models, and I think this uh, go-to-meeting platform uh, we used uh, for uh, this webinar has also showed this uh, this value uh, uh, to uh, to communicate uh, with each other about this interesting topic. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Vic, uh, Patrick, and Jos, uh, as experts, uh, to share uh, all your uh, insights uh, on this uh, interesting topic. And also uh, a, a way of thanks uh, to my colleague here, uh, Marion, for the technical part of it. Uh, we will be uh, uh, having more webinars uh, in this year uh, uh, on the IOF uh, 2020. Uh, platform uh, so please look out uh, uh, for uh, next announcements of other interesting uh, topics for this moment i also would like to thank everyone who joined us uh, uh, today uh, and discussing with us uh, this uh, this topic and for sharing uh, uh, your questions uh, uh, to uh, uh, vic and uh, jos and, and patrick so um, uh, i wrap it up uh, saying uh, thank you uh, from us all and uh, have a good day uh, and thank you for this this session Thank you very much on behalf of uh, of all of us here. Thank you. See you everybody. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.